What's going on guys, Snaggy here and it's time to preview round 27 of the 2024 NRL season. Guys, we're here. We've made it to the end, lads. We're still going. How good. Man, I cannot believe it's already over. Well, this, the the final, the, the regular season's over. We've still got about two months of footy left because we've got the Pacific Championships at the end of the year too, guys. But I just want to ask for two minutes of time, especially if you're a real one. I just have a couple things I want to go over for next year. At the end of the day, I want to make content that's good for you guys. Like I said, this year was more of a test. I just want to see how it all went. Um, see if I sort of enjoyed doing it. I obviously did it last year too, sort of. And this year I took it a little bit more serious. Now I'm like, yep, this is dope. I'm going to go big next year. So um, I'd love to hear your guys' suggestions of stuff you would like to see for next year. Predominantly NRL content stuff. Like, But what types of videos you would sort of like to see. I have a few ideas. I'll, I'll rattle a couple off now. Not so much for content, just for in general, just a snag sports thing in general. And uh, let me know if you think they're good ideas. Let me know if there's anything new you'd want to see, whatever. Um, so first thing I do want to do next year for sure is host our own super coach and tipping comp, all right, a snag sports one. Let me know what you'd think to do for prizes. I, one thing I definitely want to do is a mad shirt, but also I don't know if you've seen the super coach rings. Uh, do our own super coach ring, so winner gets that, gets a shirt and like, Think of a prize that's not like, because I'm going to be paying for it out of my own pocket. Um, you know what I mean? Like, just a TV. You know, I don't know, like, I don't know, tickets to the grand final. Something like that, you know what I mean? Something that's like under a grand, that's not going to break me, didn't break me, not that something's going to get me in trouble with the missus, you know? Like, something that's going to, you know, that I, I can I can sort of uh, get away with. You know what I'm saying? So, love to do that. Also, on that subject of super coach, I was thinking about getting someone, if anyone does know anyone, um, like a super coach expert for to do a weekly video, because obviously I'm not an expert at it. I've only played a full season for the first time this year, and I came about 25,000th. So, obviously, I'm not an expert at it. So, I'd love to bounce it off and sort of how I'd like to do it is like, you know, they're good. And I, I ask questions that a noob would ask. So, because most people watching those would be noobs. You know what I mean? So I'm asking the newbie questions. Because the few super coach ones I've seen, it's like two two guns talking. And I'm like, what are you even talking about, bros? I don't even know what the hell's going on here. So I can ask the newbie questions um, sort of thing. So uh, that would be good. Another thing I want to do too is a uh, full community punt. So what I wanted to do is um, put a multi down that's paying like 500 to one or something like that. I put like 20 or 50 bucks on whatever. So it's paying out big, like tens of thousands. And it's, But... If you want, you guys can chuck in on it too. So like, say you wanted to, I think you'd do like buy my coffee where you like donate two bucks or something like that. And then so we we launch it on the Tuesday or whatever. This is what I'm going to put down. You guys chuck in. Let's say at the end of the thing, there's a hundred bucks in it. Chuck that on it. Let's say it's paying out a hundred K. And if it wins, I don't know, man, like open again, suggestions, corporate box at the grand final. I don't know, something hectic that we can actually blow the money on. If it hits, it's just a bit of fun. You know, and you, the, you and all the boys, just thinking like a bigger one when you and the boys chuck in at the tab and you're like all bet on a horse and if it all comes big, you have a massive night together. Just sort of like a big version of that. And that's um, another idea I wanted to do. Might not hit, but you know, you never know, man. We can find something that's tasty. You never know. You can, t you can get those odds pretty, uh, pretty juicy pretty quick, you know, so... Um, that was thinking as well. And just for the off-season, guys, we'll be doing um, NFL and NBA punts, but they'll just be shorts. Um, I probably won't do long content for them. Just being straight up, I, I'm not doing long content on something I'm not an well, not that I'm an expert at rugby league, but you get what I'm saying. I know rugby league like the back of my hand. Uh, like, I don't even know what the trades were in the off-season for the NBA unless you're a superstar. So um, I do love NBA. I know the game pretty well. I do okay on the punt, but I'm not going to sit here and talk about stuff I'm not you know well versed in and watching tons of game of uh, you know like I said we've only got KO in here in Australia so we get a couple of games every other day you know so um, yeah we'll we'll see how we go with that but I'll probably just post shorts with all my punts and obviously um, yeah do that whole thing but I'll drop all those in the discord and all that sort of stuff as well but yeah let me know guys absolutely cannot wait so make sure you have joined the discord so I can just maybe I don't get around to putting my punts in um in a short, like sometimes I post them at night and the game's on in the morning. You know, I couldn't be bothered doing a video at midnight. So make sure you follow on, um, follow on the Discord. I'll leave links for that in the description, guys. And I'll um, 
also obviously you can copy them on dabble as well so if you do want to join dabble use the link in the description guys or follow me monster snag um all right so just again before we get into the games i just wanted to go over a couple of just a couple crazy things how big 2024 has been for rugby league like the game is booming just a few things because sometimes you know you do that yearly wrap this is sort of a bit of a yearly wrap you don't realize all the crazy stuff that's happened so first went to vegas now that was huge but that, just just for a bit of context it broke the record all-time record for most viewed opening round of any sport round one of any sport in australian history so biggest round one bigger than any afl bigger than any anything boom smash that record guys so that's that's absolutely huge and obviously going back next year and it's going to be even bigger they're going to fill that stadium lads um we had the first nrl team to sell out every single home game the Wars. shout out to the Wars. but not only that there was heaps like for example manly i believe the sharks there was heaps that didn't do the full year but they were damn close like they nearly sold out every game so you know obviously some of the smaller stadiums but huge absolutely huge so over, highest overall attendance in the nrl and they actually this is the craziest thing they actually had that beat in about round i think don't quote me it might be it was either 23 or 24 or something like that so there were still rounds to go with attendance since then they broke the largest round attendance record okay so <laughs> They've, they've smashed smashed the, the second largest because they've not only were they already ahead so many like with rounds to spare in those rounds to spare they had their largest ever attendance which was round 26 last year uh, last last week um just absolutely huge state of origin smashed records over 11 million views on that one and the game three over five million views absolutely massive and it's um it's going to be bigger next year it really is um ko's apparently channel nine's numbers are up but not substantially up but i think think one of the main reasons is so many people are switching to ko ko's numbers i mean we haven't heard them yet but apparently they're substantially up nearly 33 percent up on last year so absolutely crazy and uh, obviously bringing the bears in at wa is going to <laughs> be huge like uh, I always believe AFL will rule WA. It's been entrenched there for such a long time, but there are so many people in WA who don't like AFL. There are so many, um, there's so many Kiwis, there's so many, you know, like people that from the East Coast, Sydney, Brisbane, all that, that moved there for mines. That they would go to rugby league games regularly. It's going to pump. It's going to absolutely pump. So rugby league's in such a good place at the moment, guys. The NRL is absolutely thriving. And I cannot wait to see all these numbers officially released at the end of the year. It's going to be huge. It's going to be absolutely huge, guys. So big ups to everyone running the NRL. You're doing a really good job. Please don't leave anytime soon because who is it? Abdo and who's the other? Volandis. Give them pay rises and the players and me and oh, just on me just not so much me but also just one thing because i obviously check a lot of the google uh, youtube analytics and stuff like that get the back end of it and all that stuff in the studio podcast numbers are insane so massive like levels from last year to this year their numbers are like <laughs> bloke in the bars are up but like they were already so big my numbers are crazy. Like my, like I just actually can't believe how how big this sport's getting, man. It's, it's crazy, man. I can't wait to see what's like in a few years. It's really going to be huge. Now, one last thing I did want to touch on too, guys. Just on Vegas, we just spoke about it. You know, we uh we obviously use Dabble on the punt. They are having a competition at the moment. I'll put it up on the screen, somewhere. Um, to get tickets to Vegas, all you have to do is enter on YouTube, guys. I'll leave the link for their YouTube. Uh, sorry, on their instagram i'll put that in the description as well guys all you have to do is like comment and like and comment and follow double on the instagram could we get a trip to vegas i'll see you there i won't win it but you know oh my i entered so maybe i'll win it hopefully hopefully i win <laughs> all right guys let's get into the actual footy all right so man it's uh, actually pretty crazy we'll have a quick look uh, we'll just go through the games first quickly um, as always, guys, drop your one to eight. Who's winning all these games? Broncos versus the Storm in Brisbane. We have the West Tigers versus the Eels. The Spoon Bowl, how massive. We have the Rabbitohs versus the Roosters. This could have been such a big game, unfortunately. It's still a big game, it always is, but you know, Roosters get 
Rabbitohs aren't doing quite as good as we thunk. I'm doing as good as we thunk. Um, Dragons versus the Raiders, technically still in it. Te- because if so- if there's a buy, uh, sorry, a draw between the final game, one of these two teams will get through. Bulldogs versus the Cowboys, massive game for both teams. Absolutely massive games. Panthers versus the Titans. Another this is the way this final rounds. We might break some records on this final round. Seriously, there's so much on the line. Uh, West Tiger, uh, sorry, um, Sea Eagles versus the Sharkies. <sighs> Huge game, and then to get into the finals, the final game of the round. Uh, final, yeah, final game of the round. Knights versus the Finns, and the Wars have already started their Mad Monday. Me, how would they say it? Mad Monday, Mad Monday. I'm gonna have six six drunks. <laughs> Uh, don't hate me, Kiwis. Um, all right, guys. So where was that thing I wanted to... There was this thing. I'll put it up on the screen too now. Like um, it's, uh, the the lowdown around doing something. I think NRL.com posted this one. So well, here's the ladder here, guys. Make sure you guys can see it all. Uh, my big head's in the way of a bit of it. But Storm have locked down the minor premiership, so they're staying. Panthers can finish second if they beat the Titans. So Panthers just have to win. It's absolute lock. Doesn't matter what results are, they stay there. Roosters finish second if they beat the Rabbitohs, and Panthers lose to the Titans. So pretty unlikely, but we'll see. Um, yeah, Seagull, uh, if Seagulls beat the Sharks, they will host a home elimination final round one. So if the Seagulls, yeah, defeat the who have they got? Seagulls defeat the Sharks. Yeah, they will jump up because these two teams are playing each other. Um, the winner of the Bulldogs and the Cowboys will take fifth place and host. So, Seagulls, big game for them. One of these, they're going to jump one of these two teams if they win. Absolutely huge. Um, and yeah, you really don't want to lose this game. Um, just that extra home ground advantage would be massive. Absolutely massive. And winner of Dolphin Knights will take eighth. So Dolphins Knights are playing each other as well. And if not Dolphins and Knights, can you guys see that? Yeah. Um, if Dolphins and Knights draw, <laughs> Dragons and Raiders are playing. One of them will go through. Technically, I mean, I dare say it's going to be a close game. It could be a draw. <laughs> like, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh man, that would be absolutely nuts. But I'd say it's going to be uh, one of the Dolphins or the Knights. I wonder what the the draws paying. I wonder what the draws paying for uh for that game. Paying a bit. I might, I might slap a tenner on it. I might slap a tenner on it once. Yeah, so absolutely huge, guys. Um, the way the draws fallen, like I think someone said fourth to eleventh are all playing each other, right? They are, yeah, literally eleventh. To fourth, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> how nuts is that? Because the thing is, it's always tight between about fourth to about twelfth or eleventh, but normally not playing each other at the end. You know, like you know, the, the Knights might be playing, you know, the Storm or something, whatever. But like to have that log jam, which there is every year, like you know, they're usually separated by two or three wins max. <laughs> to have them all play each other is absolutely wild. All right, let's get into the games, lads. Now, guys, I haven't done my punts uh, again. Just like I said, they haven't populated yet. I just I don't like doing this video too late at night because I get tired. Um, so, like I said, make sure you subscribe, guys. Oh, yeah, that's another thing, a goal for me. I really did want to hit 8K by the end of the year. We're closing in on it, guys. So if you can, shoot us a sub. But also, that that will if you hit the notifications thing, when I do do my shorts, they'll pop up and you'll be able to just see my shorts real quick. You don't have to listen to me talk for an hour to, to see what I'm punting on. Way better. I like it better. Get through it quickly. Same also on the Discord, guys. I'll post them in there too. Um, if you do want to check them out. All right. Now, Payne Haas, Xavier Wilson, Katoni Staggs, and Pia Kura out. I mean, one of the bros said it in um, on uh, YouTube when I was sort of, I was jumping on the Broncos bandwagon. Yeah, the bro goes, ah, bro, I think you're uh, overestimating uh, the Broncos. <laughs> this was before their game against the Dolphins. Yeah, bro, you were right. <laughs> I overestimated or something fierce. I really did. Uh, shout out to you, bro. You got me there. Uh, you got me there. Um, now, Storm, I just wanted to have it. So far, Longo is at fullback. 
Munster, so Jerome Hughes is playing. I thought Munster might get rested for this one, but no. Nah. Yeah, so uh, not looking good for the old Bronx. This could uh, this could get messy. You got Fletcher Baker in in the front row. I think Fletcher Baker might be on his uh, way to England after this one. And Reese Walsh named in reserves, guys. So yeah, not looking great there. Um, yeah, this this could get messy. Uh, Melbourne do not take it easy on the Brisbane Broncos ever. They really love beating the Brisbane Broncos. Broncos have lost six of their past seven games at Suncorp Stadium. The Broncos have won fifteen. Uh, sorry, the Storm have won fifteen of their past sixteen games against the Broncos. I think that one game was that semi-final. <laughs> Broncos absolutely torched them. Um, Broncos have conceded 135 points in their past four games at Suncorp. Wow. Jerome Hughes has scored nine tries in 11 games against the Broncos. That could be nice. And then Mariner has scored 11 tries in 14 games. Let's have a look where Mariner's playing, actually. In the centres. See, yeah, I'm not taking that. Jerome Hughes could be nice, though. You've got... Yeah, he would be on... Ricky plays right. But he'd be left. Yeah, he's got Jaden Hunt there. He'd be on his side, would he? Oh, that's round 26. So we have Arthur's on Warbrick, Oates. Ricky is on Month. Yeah, so Jerome Hughes will be on Hunt. That could be nice if you like Hughesy. He loves scoring against the Broncos. And then Warbrick on Arthur's and Mariner, Oates, Cobbo. Yeah, like, so I'd be taking a. Uh, be looking for something tasty in this one yeah but Melbourne Storm to win guys Melbourne Storm to win well Melbourne Storm to attack. I'm pretty high on the Melbourne Storm at the moment I think they're they've got they're, they're the one team that's really ramped it up this year like they really have um, they're going to be really hard to beat this year in general their tails are up everything everything's good, feels nice for them you know you know when a team's humming and they, they roll out a B team and they, they're competitive with the top team? That's that's just a sign that things are working. Things are clicking. I've got the Melbourne Storm to win and win well. I think they could I think they could do 18 plus here. I, I, I'm not saying they're going there. I'm not taking that. But I like Melbourne Storm with an 11.5 point head start. If you can get that at an okay price. I'm not paying much. But, uh, yeah, this could get ugly. Interesting to see if Reese Walsh plays. And... Um, but yeah, Melbourne are going to be tough to beat this year. They're, they're looking real nice. Brisbane Broncos, for me, I think they'll be back next year. I think they're going to be good again. Um, Cooper Cronk said this. I've, I felt the same way. Like Everyone's sort of been like dissing the Broncos so hard this year, like their epic failures and stuff like that. I, I personally... like They failed. Like They've got a top four roster and they finish 12th. You know, well, it could be worse, but you get what I'm saying. Um, I... A lot of people, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? I honestly think this this is my honest take on the Broncos and why if they I think it's a quite an easy fix. I live in Brisbane, I see the Brisbane media, I you know I know some people there. They were getting a lot of pats on the back, told, Don't worry guys, you'll win this year. You gotta lose one to win one, guys, you'll be fine, blah blah blah. They were getting told that all the way till about round sixteen. I just feel like they would just all you have to do and Cooper Cronk said this, so like Cooper Cronk's pretty much spot on with everything he says. He's, I love listening to his stuff. Um, you can just you can be down five percent on your training intensity, on your this, on your that, and you can you can plummet really quickly. Like when you're hungry, need need all that sort of stuff. Maybe you take that extra session. Maybe you take maybe your goal kick. You you sit there and you goal kick for an extra hour. Maybe maybe you maybe you only do half an hour when you're you, when you you know everything's when you pumped up and all that sort of stuff it's just it's just the way it is man like P Penrith and the Storm both have sort of ruined us over the part well Storm for about 20 years but Penrith over the last five that if you do good one year you're going to do good the next no no like uh, this isn't a, a dig at all these other clubs but I would say almost odds on that Roosters to Manly down I'd say odds on more than likely these teams will finish lower than they did last year I know, like Doggies fans, but like, no, nah, man, we've got no, bro. It's 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 hard. It's really really hard. You just 
you know, everyone's saying, well, well, you know, the five-year plan and we're going to be, you know, next year we finish fifth, so we're going to be better. Next. No, you still have to do all that work. I'm not saying they will, but you get what I'm saying. Just because you finished in fifth one year doesn't mean you're going to finish higher the next or around the same. You can drop out of the top eight real quick. Ask, ask the Eels and the Broncos. Ask, ask the Bunnies. You know, it's, it's really easy just to drop off that 5%. And you're just way off. And that that's all I feel like. The Broncos have been down 5 to 10% for me. They still look nice in the first half of the year. And then they got some injuries, blah, blah, blah. All that sort of stuff. But I think they'll be fine. So um, hopefully they get their stuff together. Because I, I like when the Brisbane Broncos are doing good. I would really do. All right, on to the Spoon Bowl, lads. Game of the round. Just take the day off work. Get ready for this one. This is bigger than State of Origin. This is going to be huge. All right, so both teams are playing real good footy. The, the, this is the going to be the highest quality spoon bowl we have ever seen. Like, just on on this, like that. Most teams, when they get the spoon, you can go back and look through the ladder. When you get to the end of the year, you might have two or three wins. Both teams have six. Like they've done, they've actually played all right. Like, just put it in perspective, like teams are fighting for the eight have eleven. Like it's not like. They're way, way behind. Like they're they're a fair bit behind, but you get what I'm saying. Like there's there's teams fighting for the eight in eleventh, you know, with eleven wins. It's it's, a, it's been a high quality year. Like the bad teams have actually won a, an okay amount of games. So, um, and I, I've throughout the year I've I've sort of said I think they've both been playing pretty damn good footy. Um, oh, we forgot to do some look at the try scorers and stuff for the Broncos guys. We'll just have a quick. Oh, they're not up yet. Oh, hang on, let me just refresh this. Oh, here we go. We've got some try scorers here. Uh, so, Oatsy, Arthurs. I like Cobbo. He missed us last week. And um, where's Katoa? Who's Katoa going to be on? I like Katoa for one, actually. Yeah, Katoa on Hunt. Katoa Hughes. If you want some value, you get some value out of Katoa and Hughes. Um, that could be real tasty. Let's see if I can bring that up. Sorry about the uh, the all-overness of this video. But if, you, if you've if uh, you been following me a while, you know I'm all over the place from time to time. <laughs> But yeah, that if you want some value, that and you, do, you know, some people don't like just picking the, you know, the Corey Oates and the, uh, you know, the couple of wingers that are most likely going to hit. They like a bit of value. So if you like that, let's, oh here we go, we're up. We got uh, Storm. We go same game multi, and we'll go Katoa and Hughes. See what we got there in value wise. Play a trump markets. Longer. How good's that wish art been, bro? He's probably a good one. Katoa. And Jerome Hughes, <whistles> six eighty, not bad, not bad. If you like it, um, all right. Let's get back to this game. All right, so Eels versus the Tigers. Um, we're looking pretty. I'll tell you, what, I don't mind this so far, are they? Now I like Eels to win the first half. I. Um, Trent, is it Trent Barrett, their coach? Their spilling coach, yeah. Um, he said if there's, if this, if the games were 30 minutes long, we'd be in the top four. I think he said we'd be the minor premiers. They've been good for about 60 minutes, and we saw them fall apart. So I, I like in this one, Parramatta to win the first half or whatever, and then lose the game, if you like that. Or win the first half, lose the second half, if, you can take, if your bookie has those odds. I like that one. Um, Tigers can come home swinging. And we saw the Dragons. How many points did they leak in the last 10 minutes of the game? Was it 28 points? Nuts. Imagine if you took the unders in that game. <laughs> oh. Yeah, look, guys. Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. So, Tigers look good in little patches, but you don't know where those patches are. Eels are a little bit more predictable. They can come out the blocks nice. Like they've, they've jumped out to 16, 18-point leads on plenty of teams this year, got run down. Um, so yeah, I like Eels to get on top early and then Tigers to come over the top of them. Now, I think the Eels are going to win, but a part of me just wants the Tigers to not get the spoon again. But yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take the Eels. I really don't think they want that spoon, but I think Tigers are in exactly the same boat. Oh, it's the old Facebook marketplace thief. There he is, lads. He didn't actually do that. I just reckon he looks like a lad that would scam you on Facebook Marketplace. Um, yeah, I, oh, geez, this is tough. This is tough. Let's let's have a look at these before I make my decision. Um, West Tigers have scored 66 points in consecutive games at Campbelltown. 
Uh, Eels have won nine of the past 11 games against West Tigers. Uh, West Tigers aiming for two wins in a season against the Eels for the first time since 2012. Mick Acevo has scored 19 tries in his past 12 games. Tigers are aiming for three successive wins for the first time since 2018. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. Uh, we'll go to Tigers, eh? We'll go to Tigers. Why not? Get off that spoon. Get off that bottom of the table there. I think the Eels are going to be pretty good next year, eh? I just have a feel Riles is going to be good for them. So you let them win the spoon next year and then make, finish as low as possible. So when I take them to make the top eight next year, I'll get better odds. We'll do that, eh? All right. Let's have a look at some try scores here, lads. Oh, where did that go? Where the hell did that go? Go back. Why can't I? Here we go. Tigers, Eels. So, Eels are favourites. I can we'll get some points here, boys. Take over 50 in this one. Let's go over 50. Yeah, over 51. Yeah, I'll probably take over 48 in this one, guys. Uh... Now, we are at Eels. Mikasevo is pretty damn safe. Jesus Christ, he's strong, isn't he? Um, so, yeah, like Eels to probably score first. Eels first to 16. Eels to win the first half, stuff like that. And then if you want to go risk that, there's crazy money in that. Like predicting first half and then the second half being different. Like if you take Eels, Eels, you know what I mean? Or Tigers, Tigers, not really hard. But when, when you get both halves right, it's that you can get some tasty odds. Uh and as far as try scorers goes, where are we looking? So we're looking where the Tigers score them. Pretty even, but more left. And Eels just concede them everywhere, don't they? Yeah, you might just have to... This, this will be a bit of a lucky dip, guys. Uh, we'll go here. We'll go to Eels game. Have a look at some matchups here. Um, Olakuatu on lane. Brown was on one, wasn't he? Yeah, I don't know who try scorers in this. It's a bit all over the place. Gutho could get one. Yeah, Sebo's obviously the obvious choice. Brown's on my no punt list. I'll tell you what, Apicorosia through the middle as well. Eels, leak him th Eels don't leak him through the middle because the edges are so exposed. <laughs> uh, maybe our Tupo on... On Russell as well. Tupo's a beast. Yeah, I'll have to have a bit more of a think of try scorers in this one, guys. Uh, but yeah, a lot, I, I'm going to go the Tigers to win, but Eels should win. I, I, even though they've both been... I think both teams have been playing good in patches, but I feel like Eels' patches are bigger. Like Eels have a nice 60-minute patch, whereas Tigers are like a couple of random patches here and there. So... Um, if you're close, if you're just winning your super coach, oh, not your super coach, your tipping comp, maybe take the eels. But yeah, I think um, I'm gonna go tigers. Let's go tigers. Why the hell not? All right, let's go on to Rabbitohs verse. How crazy is this? All right, so it's so funny. I've been seeing everyone sort of saying roosters are done, roosters are done, roosters are done. But look at this, right? Brandon Smith, Tupo, Butcher, Walker, Radley out. Okay, that's a lot of outs. They still have state of origin front rowers starting. They have a the state of origin super sub as their number nine. They have the best second row in the comp who was the best player at state of origin, in my opinion, over the three games. <laughs> they have, in my opinion, the best bench front rower, if it isn't Spencer Lino and Tyrrell May has just been absolutely killing it. They've got the Australian captain at fullback. They've got the best young, you know, the best, uh, you know, what, young prospect on the on, on, late in the game at the moment he's still on 20 years old or whatever got Joey Marno who is the best center in the world I think Critter might have pipped him in the last 18 months or whatever but second best third at absolute worst and, and then a Pommy International on the way this team is still so stacked bro like they, what like their depth is just unmatched like that is insane you're still like you've got all that out and you've got the Australian captain. You've got the starting front row for the Australian... Well, the, you know, the two state of origin props. Is one of them starting the best second... Stop it. The sombrero is for real. <laughs> Seriously, that is so crazy. Uh, I heard a lot of chat like they're not going to do it. They're still, this is still a great team. I have Reese's to win this one, guys. Um, 
Rabbitohs have won only two of their uh, Rabbitohs have won only two from twelve against top, current top eight teams this season. Roosters have won four of their past five games against the Rabbitohs. Rabbitohs halfback Cody Walker has scored seven tries from eight games against the Roosters at a core stadium. Tupo scored 12 tries in 10 games. He's out, though. Kepi will play his 100th. I don't know if he's going to make his 200th. I think the bro might be the Super League pretty damn soon if he keeps making those errors and dropping those balls. Seriously, bro. Seriously, bro. Uh, Tupo is out for this one, though. Hopefully not for too long. But, yeah, I think uh, I think Roosters win this one, guys. I still think they've got way too much there. And uh, I think they get this one done quite... I wouldn't say easily, but... I think they get it. I think it, also, uh, <clears throat> I feel like um, what's his name? Uh, Jack White has really straightened their attack up real nice, which has sort of let Cody Walker play. Playing, he scored a try the other day. I was just, I was just such a Jack White, White try there. Rabbitohs attack was just all over. The joint, just scoop it up and just ran a mad line and just crashed over. I was like, yeah, it's Jack White. And, uh, <laughs> didn't even need to see the number on his back. Uh, so yeah, I like um, I like Roosters in this one, guys. Now I don't like taking try scorers in the Roosters games just because they just they just don't pay anything because they score so many damn points. What I have been like in doing against the Roosters is taking the other team to score some points because they're such big favourites in this game, in their games. Taking the Rabbitohs or just the teams have been playing. I think I had, I think I had. Canberra, I've done it in the last couple of games. Canberra to score three and a half points in the second half. One try, not even a converted try. You know, so I think I had that with the Titans as well. Like, it's just, that's that's what I found a real nice bet against some of these top teams. It's very hard to win to nil anymore. Like, it doesn't happen very much. Um, especially in halves. Like, you can usually, like, you, you're going to get the run. And, uh, there's so much attack now. I've found that it's just it's not that hard to get three and a half points in a game. So uh, that that might be a good one there. Just you know, roosters to get three and a half points in either half. Would pick pick your half, whichever one you think is probably more likely. I'd probably take the second because the roosters do seem to take the foot off the gas a little bit in the second half. Uh, you try scorers, like I said, I probably won't touch them, but I'll probably slap something down for a bit of fun. Um, and yeah, we'll. Yeah, we'll see how we go. But yeah, I like, uh, like Roosters in this one. Let's move on. No need to talk about that one too long. Just on the Roosters winning the comp, like, a lot, that's been a lot of chat. Are they done for the comp? Can they win the comp still? <coughs> I'd write, um, like, no. In pencil, though, with an eraser on the back. Not in capital letters, not in bold, big bold letters with a, an exclamation point at the end. Not, not like that, but oh, gee, doesn't look good. But this whole chat of them, like not, I think Guru said they're not going to win another game this year. I, I don't see that. I still think they're better than most. You just read read the list I just read, right? Like they're still got a pretty damn good team. Like yeah, it's uh, pretty nuts. All right, on to the Canberra Raiders versus the Dargans. Ravalawa out, and I'd say his career's over too. That was absolutely disgusting what he dished up against the Eels. Uh, I think he'd be on his way to the Super League as well. Uh, who's this dude? King Tongi. Tonga? How do you say that, boys? <laughs> uh, Jack Bird back to the centres. I don't mind that. Couchman gone. Molo. Uh, look, I was just so damn impressed with the milk last weekend, boys. Like, just so damn impressed. Um, they're, they're good. They're really good. Like, Fogarty back. Jordan Rapana gone. Wyden gone. Uh, I think that's actually... Oh, semi Sasigi. Sasigi? Sasagi? Corey Horsburgh still there. Harry Mariotti. Yeah, I, I, I'm feeling that. I'm really feeling the Raiders. Hey? I, re, I really like. I hope they finish on a high. Um, I think they really. If they even lose this game, where they sit, I think they proved a lot of people wrong. They're 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 a good footy team. They're gritty. They've they've beat Penrith and Penrith and the Roosters this year. They they've really turned up in some games. The main downfall was Fogarty going down for a really long time, and just there's a few games where they just got uh, annihilated. But they they they. Sh- it's funny, someone said, oh, like, Panthers couldn't give them a heart. I, was, I can't remember what it was. And I was like, man, Penrith, I mean, they, they've, look at, if you actually look through all their games, they've been gritty in games. 
it's just it's just not like they're just not always gritty. It's just sometimes they do fall away. They've they've had about five or six games this year where they've just ground teams into the ground and won. Maybe not five, but you you get what I'm saying. They've quite a few. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look at the. Yeah. Dragons have won only two of their past nine games against the Raiders. Raiders have not defeated the Dragons at Cogra since 2004. <sighs> Zach Lomax has scored four tries in five games at Jubilee Stadium. Xavier Savage has scored six tries in his past seven games. For me, Xavier Savage is probably the most improved player of the year. No, he's not. No, Wishart is. He's up there. He has been enormous. He's been really, really good. Uh, Dragons have conceded 82 points back-to-back losses against the Sharks and Eels. <sighs> Yeah, I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the Raiders, eh? I'm gonna take the Raiders. Right, let's have a look. See here, guys. Predictions. Might I might take a lower scoring one in this one, hey? Under fifty. Yeah, I might take that. I might take under fifty one in this one. I think both teams are gonna to want to win it. Real bad. Yeah, there you go. Unders is a thirteen percent edge. So I'll be looking at under fifty two. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, and then try scorers. I don't think there's going to be a ton of them, so I might avoid them. But yeah, I really like that unders, guys. That's a big edge. Under 51. You get a nice 15, 20-minute period. I know this could blow out, but yeah, I, I, like the, I like the unders in this one, guys. What time? What time is this game on? 3 p.m. Ooh, yeah, I'm I'm, gonna, I'm probably probably leaning towards the unders on this one. Leaning towards the unders. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Raiders up the milk. <sighs> Onto one of the bigger ones of the year of the round. This is huge. Bronson Sherry and Matt Burton out. Sherry out means Karaz in the centers. I don't like him in the centers. He's good, but I just love him. I love him at wing. So. Matt Burton out is enormous. Chad Townsend comes in. Finny Fuiaki, Thomas McKelly. So, Luke is starting. They got some size on the bench, boys. They got some size on the bench, boys. Boy. And they've still got the salmon in at lock. This is huge. This is huge for both teams. Um, home final on the line. Both teams have a distinct home ground advantage in a sense, especially the Bulldogs, even though they're, it, it, they've got a much better record at home, but also um, just that tra- that extra travel. Uh, Cowboys, Cowboys have actually been pretty good on the road this year, but still, you want the team to come to you in Townsville. Tra- do, they're doing their captain's run in 35 degree heat with 90% humidity, going, why are we here? You want that. Yeah. Um, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. Concerns for me for the Bulldogs. I like the Bulldogs, but like Cowboys have sort of pissed. Like I like the Cowboys, but what what's why I'm pissed off is because I, I started nut riding them a bit, and they've sort of. I feel like they let me down a little bit a few times. I love Critterback, obviously. What concerns me though is, to me, one of the best wingers in the comp. Is now playing in the centres. You have Skelton, who's a bit of a liability defensively and just a pretty inexperienced there on the wing. So you sort of weaken two positions almost. Uh, then you have Drew Hutchison in, and you lose your boot. That this is the problem, and this is why I've been like. Bulldogs don't have a big pack. I, I guess someone was trying to tell me they're bigger than you think. I'm like, no, they're not. They're they're not bigger than I think. I know. I know. I've seen all these guys in person. They're not big people. Besides Kikia, Hughes is a decent sized man, but not for a front row or anything. Like you put, so you stand him next to Pasekar or Payne. Hey, he's just, he's he's medium at best, and he's your biggest. You know, so the Bulldogs can get slapped from time to time, and they make 25 meters on the in a set. Burton boots at seventy, mad kick chase because they're you know they're all digging in. They're fine, and then they'll just grind, and then they'll just keep running hard, and eventually they will get on top, and they start running fifty meter sets. It's just it's worked so good. I, I'm so interested to see how they play without Burton. 
because Toby Sexton's got he's got an okay boot. Like it's not it's a terrible boot or anything, but it's not huge. Clifford's definitely got a big boot. Drew Hutchinson, I can't think of what his long kicking games are like off the top of my head. Um, from memory, not great. Um, what happens if they get smacked and they're sitting in there, they're kicking the ball from 25, 30 metres away from their own try line and then drink water catches the ball. And has tons of room. That's That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm really, really worried about. Also, we obviously talked about this last week, Sam. Like, I hope people, like, I had a lot of, especially Bulldogs fans, I wasn't having to go, which is, and they, they, I was like, they were agreeing with me, but they were like, oh, man, like, yeah, Kurt Mann's a big out, but Jamin Salmon can come in and play that role. I'm like, yeah, like, anyone, I could come in and play that role. I can't do it as good as Kurt Mann, though. And I think everyone watching that game last week went, oh, yeah, Kurt Mann's way better than Jamin Salmon. <laughs> Kurt Mann was, Kurt Mann was killing it like people don't really like a lot of people especially even dogs fans just you know you know they joke off the critter they you know they're burton and villy and all that stuff but i don't think people realize how good kurt man had been until you watched them play without him and you're like wow they lost all their direction went the wrong way a few times passes getting caught up here instead of on the chest or out in front is uh he's really good and he's out so jamin salmon is Good, but he's not him. He's not the man. I, I'm so on the fence with this game. I, I just like, I, I really. If this was in Townsville, I'd take town. I'd take Cowboys, but it's in Bel- Belmore. They've been really good at home. They've only lost one game at home, and that was last week. And to be fair, they were not that bad against Manly. They just got exposed a little bit. Oh, bros, I don't know what to pick. So, I already did these, didn't I? All right, no, I haven't. Bulldogs have won seven of their past eight games at a core stadium. Cowboys have won six of their past eight games against the Bulldogs. Whoa. Bulldogs have scored at least 22 points in six consecutive games. Val Holmes has scored 44 points in his last two games. What? 44 in two games? Wow. Josh Adokar scored 11 tries in 11 games against the Cowboys. Uh, I, I'm going to take the Bulldogs to win, man. I, I tell you what, I like that price, though. It's just... I'm so, this is why I'm so on the fence, right? Like, I look at this team list. I'm, I'm, I've got my, my mouse hovered over the Cowboys. It's so much better than this team list. It just is. Oh, I'm sorry, it is. But Bulldogs just keep winning. And Cowboys sort of keep letting me down. It's really hard. It's just, it's just. I think Wayne Bennett even said it. He said, "I don't understand how the Bulldogs are going good." I'm, I'm the same. I'm not, I'm not. I don't hate the Bulldogs. I just, I don't understand. Like if Wayne Bennett doesn't understand, how do you expect me to understand? <laughs> like, it's wild, man. It's so wild. Uh. Jeez, who do I go? Let's. Let's go Bulldogs for a home final. I just, just I'm strictly picking on that Bulldogs to get a home final. How good would that be? That'd be absolutely enormous. Bulldogs to get a home final. Hopefully they do it at a core. That'd be absolutely massive. But look, guys, I'll just, just, I'll just be honest, man. Just, just what I'm honestly thinking. I like the Bulldogs. I think they've been playing better, more consistent footy. However, I, I just really like the Cowboys to win this game. I, I really like them to win this game. It's just more Bulldogs haven't let me down this year. They've just every they've just been nice every single game, last fifteen or at least anyway. Cowboys, I'm just like man, this team could be top four. They could play for the chip. But nah, that's pissed me off. So I, I, doggies probably deserve the home final a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I, I'm just my my head is telling me Cowboys. My head's telling me Cowboys. Yeah, uh, let's have a little look see it. Uh, this is a thing that was highly concerning for me for the Bulldogs and haven't been a top eight team in like 10 rounds. They've got a really bad win rate against top eight teams and Cowboys are a top eight team. 33% is really bad. Cowboys, you know, 60% against top eight teams. That's really good. You know, Bulldogs have just been cleaning up the bottom 
the bottom guys quite easily. So that's what I'm saying. All the, the team list, all the numbers are telling me Cowboys win this, guys. They really are. But I'm going to take the Bulldogs. And if you're Bulldogs, you don't win. I'm so off yous. I'm so off yous. You're done. Hope you get bounced in the first round, sons. Nah, we good. All right, let's move on to the next one, guys. Oh, try scorers for... Um, Try scores for Bulldogs. Yeah, Josh had a car for me. It would be good. Cough felt solid. I actually feel like they've been playing left a lot to Talangi. I think so. I think he's pretty good. Cowboys, un so under 48 points. Yeah, I think we could get some unders in this one, hey? Might take the unders in it. 4% edge at 48. Not bad. Bulldogs minus two and a half. Yeah, that's good. If you can get Bulldogs minus... I think the last time these guys played, Cowboys won by two points. Bulldogs minus... Oh, but they're favourites. Bulldogs minus two and a half. Just in case it's super close. I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough one. But yeah, like, uh, I like I like Talungi in this one. I like Adokar. Yeah. We'll go there. All right, Panthers, Titans, uh, Sorensen back. That's huge. And he comes straight in. Oh, scary, 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 scary. So it looks like, man, I don't know why they're playing Edwards. I would. All right, Edwards, just for me, if I'm clear, he looks, he looks slow. He looked like he was limping. There's something wrong with his leg. I, I would personally be bringing Laurie in, chucking him on the bench. If you get out to an 18-point lead, or whatever, in the first half, I'd be getting Edwards straight out of there. Straight out of there. He's so important to them going well in the finals. Um, big day for feeder out of this one. Um, yeah, guys, uh... Panthers win and win well. Panthers have won nine of their past ten games against the Titans. Titans have not won at Blue Bet Stadium since 2016. Taruva scored eight tries in nine games at Blue Bet Stadium. Jojo Fafita has scored seven tries in his past four games. James Fisher Harris will play his 200th. Fisher Harris for a try would be nice, but he's just scored two in a row. Can he score three? Can Fisher Harris become a try scorer machine? I'm going to be slapping it down. Shout out James Fisher Harris. It's a man. Uh, let's have a little look see. I might take, this is tough, this one. I really don't like games where there's a real big favourite. I like the games to be a bit more even. So we get both teams to score, stuff like that. Under 50 points is a 10% edge. Yeah, I might like, I like that too. I like that too. I might take that. Just because Panthers' attack's a little clunky. Goal kicking's not as good without Cleary there. Titans are going to struggle to score. So I like the under 50 in this one. I really do. Um, we'll take that. And try scorers. Yeah, I like Taruva. I like Taruva to score in this one. Paul Adamotti to get six points because he can get a try too. So you go unders Paul Adamotti for six points. I wonder what that's paying. No, we won't check it now. <laughs> I, get, so I always think of like... Oh, that's nice because of this and this. And then I'm like, oh, how much does that get me? <laughs> it's an addiction, lads. Um, we'll have a little look of where uh, where are the um, Titans conceding them. To, 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 where are they? There they are. Through the middle. Dylan Edwards for a try. Titans leak 31% of their tries through the middle. That is absurd. Dylan Edwards for a try through the middle. Fisher Harris. I'm taking Fisher Harris for a try through the middle. And Dylan Edwards. All right, I've got to check what that gets me. Sorry, boys. <laughs> that That's insane. So Fisher Harris is 200th. Titans leak the most tries through the middle than anyone. It looks like. That's uh, that's That's got to go down. All right, so here we go. We're going... Where are we? Panthers versus Titans. Same game. Uh, play a try market. So we go something to Dylan Edwards. You only get a buck seventy-five there. 
But where is Fisher Harris? That gets you 10 bucks. What, do you, what happens when you chuck, chuck Sonny Taruvan as well? 15 bucks. I might chuck that down and boost it for the boys, eh? That's hectic. Maybe you could chuck AKP in. 21 bucks. That's hectic. That is crazy. That is absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's going down. I'm calling it now. All right, let's move on to the next one. Massive games. Can the Sea Eagles win without Turbo and Sabi? It's still a really good team. Sharkies, not great. Um, last week, but look, they they were pretty good for the first half. But it was the the problem was like, and the problem sort of always has been like we saw it the week before. They couldn't quite ice a game. Like that, Nico Hines. I heard someone say it. I can't remember who, but Nico the, Sean Johnson in that his final game last week did what Nico Hines should have done. Like just ice that game. They had momentum. They had everything in. They should. They should have just iced the game. They were up. That's what a good half does. A good half stops you from getting run down. You know, like I was Cooper Cronk. He said. He said, like just, just like being critical from a, a you know, an ex halfback. Should have stopped the momentum. He should have just been kicking for touch, slowing the game down. Making it stop, start, doing all that sort of stuff. That's your job as a half. Like you're, you're the conductor. You're the one who controls the game. You're like, you know, like it's like a, like we sort of said this. I mentioned this in my post game as well. Like, you know, we follow basketball. We follow the NBA. So in in rugby league, the game, the, the half starts and it just goes to the end. I know there's breaks, but like there's no like in in the in basketball, if you get a bit of momentum against you, you. <laughs> Time out, and you just come, you sit down, you go over game plans, you work everything out, you go back, and you just it stops momentum. You can't do that in rugby league, so it's up to the half to be able to do that. And Nico Hines just didn't, and that that's his like he can he can tear you apart. I'm not saying he can't, but it's you also have to be that conductor. Um, and Cherry Evans, he's he's a conductor. I think they can win this. I really do. Um, Tom Trevojevic is a big out. Saab's a pretty big out. Now, who's back? Beryl, Sifatalakai, Mulatalo. Yeah, look, I think Shark should win this, but I would not be surprised if Manly jagged this one. Not be surprised at all. Let's have a look at the stat attacks. Seagulls have won eight of their not um, the Seagulls have won eight from nine at Four Pines Park this season. Massive. Sharks have won their last two games at Four Pines Park. Okay. <laughs> Seagulls have won only two from five without Turbo. It's not good. Break Bailey has um, will play his hundredth hundredth consecutive game. <sighs> That's an achievement. Seagulls uh, winger Jason Saab has scored eight tries this past eight games. He's not playing though, lads. Come on, NRL.com. Uh, I'm to and fro on this one. Because I... Teague Wilton. See, I, lo I love this, what what Seabolt's been doing lately. Like, if you've been watching me for a while, I've been a little bit critical of his... Just the teams he's picking. Not his team, like the team he's picking. And I do like it. I do I do think this, I mean, obviously with Turbo and Saab in it, but I think this is probably his best rotation. Like Croker in, Paseca Lodge. Then you've got Big Ola, Lawton, who runs an also, and then Turbo. And then the bench, you've got someone that can literally cover, lock, out, second row, out. Then you've got another big, genuine front rower. Then you've got Ethan Bullimore, who can cover, middle, or an edge. Then you've got your energy guy, energy front rower through the middle, Nathan Brown. Awesome. Like... The only thing you could have add to this, but you can't have, you know, you always miss something on the bench. You can't cover everything. Is you know like a, another number nine on the bench to cover a, a dummy half if he gets tired. But uh, now it looks like Sharkies have gone with Atkinson. They've dropped Ueli. Look, look at the talent sitting on the bench here. I mean, not getting a run. Whew. Man, I don't know who's going to win this. Eh, this is tough. This is tough, guys. Seagulls, fuck. That's how I see it. 
I see Sea Eagles a slight favourite just because they're home. I'm going to take the Sea Eagles. I'm going to take the Sea Eagles in this one. Now, how will this affect... Let's have a look. So if Sea Eagles win, they're going to jump one of these two teams. Now, one of these two teams have to win. Can they jump the Sharkies? So Sharkies are full two points ahead and 200 points. So Cowboys essentially can't. Bulldogs would have to win by about 30 and Sharks would have to lose by about 30. Yeah, so I don't see that happening. Possible though. It's possible. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go manly in this one but with not much confidence. I uh, I think Sharkies, you know, they'll figure something out. I really do. Like Mulatalo back, huge. Like I said, we just looked at the prices. That, that's exactly right for me. That's just slight home ground advantage. Leans towards the the Seagulls for me. All right, let's have a look at some uh, try scorers here, guys. I wonder what the overs unders in this would be. I might take Sharkies to score points in each half. Twenty for the predicted score, twenty four all. Okay. Imagine that. Shark East Eagles two. All right, so the totals forty nine. Hmm. All right, Lehigh. I love Lehigh Hopewadi. Let's have a little look at the matchups. Big game, boys. Big game. Oh, I like Molotalo. Molotalo for a try, lads, on this young new fella. <coughs> yeah, I love Molotalo for scoring this one. Let's have a look at the try. Uh, so where's Shark? He's still scoring. I'm still going left. Forty-three percent left, and where are where are the manly conceding them? They're conceding them on the left, so that would be manly's right. Hang on. So yeah, Katoa, Katoa for one guy. Probably go Mulatalo and Katoa because Mulatalo's got a good match up, and looks that's um, Sharkies are against. They're weak edge. So, yeah, I like that. I don't know about this unders, though. I don't trust that. I think there could be some points here, eh? Both big games for both teams, though. Sharks with one and a half point head start. 2% edge. don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take Manly with zero confidence, guys. I, I Like I said, I've actually been liking what the... The Sharks have been, I think they've been pretty damn good. I just don't think they're I don't think they're as bad as everyone's been saying. Like I just think like not everyone. A lot of people just say, Yeah, they're trash. No, they're not. They're not trash. You know you don't get to round twenty seven and and be sitting in fourth, pretty much safe in fourth position if you're trash. On to a massive game, boys. This is gonna be huge. Absolutely huge. Kai Pierce Pier put I can't say Kai Pierce Paul. Fingers crossed on Jack Cogger. It's funny that the, when they finally settled on a halves combination, they look so much better. They just kept chopping and changing that bloody halves combination. It was pissing me off so hard. They looked pretty damn good last week, the old Knights. I do feel like the Knights really like they they play like it's not like they're it's not like they like just rely on Ponga. Like so other te other players play awesome when he's playing, but it's just like I feel like. He, it just really relies on whether he has a good game or not, whether they win. You know what I mean? Like, I just really do. It's 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 weird to me. Now, I'm just going to be a bit honest. Like, Knights fans, I love you, but I, I, I just love to see the Dolphins round one in the finals. Like, just, it'd be such a good story for Rugby League. It's so good for them. The little Red Cliff Dolphins up there at KO Stadium. It'd be pretty damn cool. So I'm root. I'm, I'm not biased against them or anything. I just, I just, I'd love to see it. It'd just be awesome. And um, nights for me over the year have been a little disappointing. Um, I, I, I said in my post game, I think when they're on, I think they're one of my favourite teams to watch. They're, they're they're really nice to watch. Kalen Pong, Kalen Ponger is an absolute freak. Like, that dude is so incredible to watch play rugby league, man. 
Seriously, like seriously, he is so incredible. I just love these changes, Wayne Bennett won, and he is he is the he's a master coach, man. Like I sort of said this if you didn't watch my post game. It's not like he he's just going to out coach you week in week out, but he he always will when you when he needs to. Like he absolutely took heavy to school, man. He really did. And like I said, I loved the move from Hamaso into the centres and then Trey Fuller. Like I said, I think the 2024 game of rugby league, I think you're better off having an energy guy at the back and you're leaving your strike weapons in strike positions. You know, like I feel like Hammer can be, not always, can be wasted at fullback because he doesn't play. Like Kalen Ponga plays more like a, an extra half, so that's why he looks really good there. And he's one of those few like strike guys who, you know, like. He does because he does it. He literally plays like a half. Like you don't see Hammer so calling for the ball and doing like chipping, ch like you know, like kicking to corners and all that sort of stuff. He's more that rover. Yeah. So anyway, I really liked what he did. He, they, they absolutely spanked the Broncos. Uh, it, it was absolutely crazy. Uh, Knights scored 124 points in their past four games. Dolphins, uh, Dolphins five eight. Jack Everilla has scored five tries in his past four games. Knights winger Fletcher Sharp has scored eight tries in his past five games. Dolphins have won only two of nine games played inside New South Wales. That's concerning. Knights have won their final. Uh, Knights have won their final home game of the season in the past four years. I'll, I'll be savagely honest, just with my gut. I think the Knights are going to win, eh? I, I just do. Like I don't, I don't know what it is. It's just my gut. I just feel like the Knights are going to win. Um, they're at home. I just Caelan Ponger is just such a freak. But like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ride my bias here. I'm I'm gonna take the Dolphins to get in their first finals of the year. The Wayne Bennett just sprinkle a little bit of his magic dust over them fins and get them into the finals for the first round. That'll be so cool, man. Up the fins. Right, let's have a look at some try scorers, lads. I wonder what the overs are. This week we'll get some points on this one, boys. What's the what's the totals? Fifty. Twenty six nineteen. Where did Dolphins score all their points in the in against the Broncos? Is it first or second half? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I like Fletcher. I like Greg Marju for one Fletcher's, but they went they went. What they did last week is um, so I had Greg Marju to score. He didn't score, but what they were doing was they got that crazy shape that goes left right, goes left, not left right. They got crazy shape that goes left and. Um, you know, you got so much strike on that edge of Marju and, and Brabham Best and then um, Callum Ponga swinging around the back. What they were doing was, they did this a lot last year with, they had um, Dom Young on the other side. Dom Young scored heaps of tries last year. What they would do is, they would attack left and because they do have so much strike there, the other team just like, sw like compresses. like so, And just the amount of times they just passed like just passed through the hands to Dom Young and because he's quick he just ran to the corner and scored a try it was insane and that, that was that game what was his name uh, Fletcher Sharp he scored three tries last week and that's they, I was like oh man that was 2023 20, nights when they went on that hectic roll attack left attack left attack left so much strike just just pass the ball right <laughs> there's just space there because they've had to compress up so hard so um, yeah like a uh, I like either four. Like Fletcher Sharp is probably good for one, but also Greg Marju. So mate, you you could probably take Greg Marju or Fletcher Sharp for three or more together. That'd probably be a pretty good punt. Because they they I remember so Dom Young got him very regularly, but there were times where Do, Greg Marju and Brabham Best literally got four tries between them as well. You know, so yeah, it can split up pretty hard. Uh, so yeah, guys, I, I have a feeling Knights win this one. I think they probably do, but I, I'm taking the Finns, bro. Finns up. Fins up, boys. Right, let's have a little look, see how do we end up. So we've got Storms, we've got Tigers, we've got Roosters, we've got Raiders, we got Doggies. The more I look at that, the more I think the Cowboys are going to win. We've got Panthers, we got Seagulls, and we got Fins. Fins up. Right, that's it, lads. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.